Hello, and it's Momita Gokhale again for you, your transformation coach. Rendezvous, the transformation story, has been an awesome journey for me. Today, before I go ahead for my fourth episode, the first three episodes have been transformational. Be it Kamal Nair or Roshni Baronia or Sakar Matu, all my guests have left me with thoughts to ponder as to what is transformation actually, and is it the same for everyone? In my intent to bring about great content and renowned speakers and guests who can share their personal stories to add value to our own transformational stories. Today, I have a guest who is a blend of both, an amazing speaker himself, as well as somebody who has traveled the world. So today, I have Sanjay Mitra, who carries with himself an interesting blend of knowledge from renowned global institutions, studying under reputed international professors, coupled with application in the corporate world as a C-suit executive and the academia from NTL US and ISB Hyderabad, along with a sharp business acumen by virtue of being an entrepreneur, doing business with some of the best global brands across the consulting space, financial institutions, manufacturing sector, business networking bodies, IT sector, media, retail, and what not. Sanjay right now leads a boutique company called Inner Dynamics in the areas of senior leadership at C-suite and C1 levels. He conducts one-on-one -on -one leadership coaching and team coaching for leadership teams, and he is into mindfulness and emotional intelligence. As you listen to our conversations, perhaps you and me together will explore transformation in a different light today. So stay tuned in. Hi, Sanjay. How are you? Hey, Momita. How are you doing? doing good and it's an awesome pleasure to have you here for this little chat uh, on rendezvous the transformation story omg i i just can't believe it because i always tried to be away from this world but momita you were the first one probably who finally dragged me in and thank you very much for doing this uh, because whatever uh, we don't want to do probably we need to win a war against our own selves in a, at, at the plane of our mind so thank you for that wonderful what a great start to transformation sanjay and uh, talking about transformation uh, when perhaps you come across this word what comes to your mind momita that's a very interesting question uh, especially in a world when we are faced with all business questions and you ask me about personal transformation but are you sure you, you're not going to uh, let me talk on business transformation? And this, this particular podcast is more about personal transformation. Let me ask a clarifying question right in the beginning. It's more definitely of personal transformation, Sanjay. And that's why I have you here mm -hmm. with me. But definitely, if you are using examples, I would not stop you. There. Mm -hmm. So transformation is a very special word to me for years and years and years. Initially, when I got into it, I got into it unknowingly, unmindfully. I never knew that I was transforming myself. It is only at a later stage, Momita, that I came to understand that what I was undergoing was personal transformation. It is when I started uh, getting observed by other people around me and when people started asking me about how did you go about it? And that's the time I got conscious that there is a design behind it, which I was completely oblivious when I was in it. Yes, later on, I became very conscious. And that's the time I started reflecting that what causes, what is personal transformation? What did I do? And what caused it? And can it be replicated? So to me, and this is a later realization, so I must say that, that I found out that the transformation was happening at three levels, at a body level, which was the first transformation which I had, and I'll talk about it later, at a body level, which was very important, uh, in other words, at a physical level. 
least did I know, Momita, that it was preparing me for two other major transformational stage, which was the mind level. And today what I'm in is probably at a spirit level. So this combination of body, mind, and spirit in, in the journey of my life, the way my soul traversed, even makes me wonder how much of it was intended when I started this journey when I was a 19-year-old. I'm not taking the time before that. 19-year-old mesmerizes me. Did I, I really dreamt about what I'm trying to do now? But well, that's a, that's a very mysterious story which I get very uh, wonderstruck at times. Wonderful. I mean, the way, uh, and uh, first of all, let me congratulate you for being so authentic and saying that when you were perhaps going through transformation, you were not aware that was transformation. And today, when you're sitting across and talking to me and we are discussing and trying to unfold this topic, you are accepting it now that you look back. And I love the way you put across the three parts to it, you know, uh, sometimes. So, you and me have been in a profession and uh, you have seen so many multiple diverse fields, Sanjay, like from defense to corporate and now you're doing so much of good work in the spiritual zone and connecting it back to the corporate. It's not that you're only in spirituality at this point of time. Which phase do you think has been the one which you would like to go back and say, yes, this was the phase where I have really grown as a personality? So let me let me cite an example of uh, all the three transformations. Probably that will make it very clear and also make it enjoyable for one to understand that what is the difference between a physical transformation and the mind transformation and the spirit transformation. Um, if I talk talk about physical transformation, and let me let me tell you and let me tell you and all all the people who'd be watching this at some point that I will be uh, revealing some of my darkest secret. And thanks to you, Momita, you've been such a great uh, 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 friend, such a great person, such a great human that uh, I have the confidence of confessing. Uh, unless I do that, probably I'll not be doing justice to the topic personal transformation and also to you and also to this platform. I used to be very fat as a child. Um, well, uh, even I had a nickname in the school, which wasn't very pleasantly related to my good self, but it was more related to my, you know, <laughs> that I was so fat in the class. It wasn't very, very pleasing to be called by that name. So I was so fat. What I'm trying to tell you is I was so fat, right? I used to come last in, in any physical activity. So... I, I used to do well in the in the intellectual activities. I was like a rank holder in the school. But when it comes to sports, games, and when it came to running cross country, you know, and all those stuff, like I used to be the last 10. It wasn't a very good experience. Uh, but at some point of time, you know, when I got very tired of this and you know, people did talk and passed comments. One of the things I felt, and apart from other factors, but I'm not getting into those factors, but I'm coming to the meat of transformation, is, is I said, let me, I have to join the army and I have to prove myself. And I don't know why, but today I find it stupid, but I felt at that point of time, I have to prove it to the world as well, you know, that I am capable of transforming myself. And mind you, at that point, like when I look back and see that that point was purely physical and mental courage. But mental courage is to face the bullets and, and physical courage is to transform into that persona that will fit into the Indian army and would be rightly called the, as an army officer. And which was a far cry with the kind of physique I had. And I still remember the kind of uh, regimen I put myself into and the kind of hard work I put myself. And uh, I used to study in Xavier's at that point of time, Xavier's Kolkata and uh, whole day, you know, apart from my college, I used to run and exercise and do whatnot. And my only aim in life was to be absolutely fit. Because the thing that in my head, it was, 
if I am not fit, it's not about getting into the army, but it's also about excelling in the army. And this later on I un understood could be called as the hunger and the desire that not, not only getting through, now this is important, not only getting through, but to excel. So I, I, I did reduce a lot, a lot so much so that many people couldn't recognize me. And finally I got into the army and when I got into the army, but let me tell you again and confess again that that wasn't good enough for that. So in army, where all the people were very well toned physically, mentally, and they all came in and we were all trained together, I could barely make it. That's all about it. And I, again, there with the high standards of life or high standards of physical activity, I used to come in the last 10. So this last 10 was not leaving me. And I used to, you know, Again, excel in the academics and excel in the strategic studies and academic studies, but come in the last 10. So my rank would be somewhere in the middle out of 200, 300 people. So somewhere in the middle, and it won't be in the top five and 10, which I was never used to. And this, this I was like, it, it wasn't acceptable to me. So I started, the results were out and I was, I still remember I was 43rd out of all the students and this. 43rd is a good rank, by the way, in, in a, such a big institute, but it wasn't acceptable to me because I hadn't seen a rank beyond 5th or maximum 7th, 8th. I cried, cried, and cried. And from next day onwards, I started running and running. Running is the thing, the mantra, and running, running, and running. And I still remember one day I ran so much that I crossed the boundaries of the institute, the academy, and I crossed kilometers and kilometers and was fainted in the fields. And nobody would found, find me in a roll call. Where is this guy? And I was missing. And people went searching. There was search parties sent out and they finally found me lying unconscious about 12 to 15 kilometers away from the academy in the field. You know, in Hindi, it's called Junoon. You know, like, uh, it's better I die. And on my desk, I didn't do or die. I mean, the famous... A Mahatma's thing is to or die, and, and that is that was it. And uh, so that was the journey. And then I then I requested what the best runner. I said, "Can you be my mentor?" He says, uh, "What do you want?" I said, "I want to come in the first enclosure." Everybody laughed except him. Everybody laughed around me. All the gentlemen cadets laughed. He says, "Why don't you just go to for the next block?" And I said, "No, there's no going to the next block. It's the first block." They said, "That's a super block." That means they are the best and they get everything what they want. I said, yes, exactly. And this runner believed in me and then he started, he says, whenever I run, just latch on to me and that's all about it. And I remember, to cut the long story short, at some point when the final day race was happening, all the final tests were happening, and there always used to be the horse, the adjutant of the academy was on a horse and he used to be in the front and the horse would gallop and we all would be running behind it with 40 kg packs on our back and uh, with heavy boots and dangris and we'd run kilometers with our uh, you know uh, rifles and machine guns and at some point i told this boy who was the who's the, who the best runner i said i'm sorry buddy i'm leaving you and running ahead he said what i said yes and i don't know what what was here I, I, I left him and started. And then I started competing with the horse. And there was a horse and me and the horse and me and horse and me. I do not know if I'll be, ever be able to repeat this feat in my life ever. But it was a horse and me. And when I finally completed the race, the entire directive staff, the senior officers, were like, well, hand on. Is it that guy who's now trying, who's, who's, who's in the front? So that was the kind of physical transformation that happened. And the same thing happened in the swimming pool. I was not a swimmer. I was a non-swimmer. It's very difficult for a non-swimmer in academy, but then passed out with, again, flying colors and finally came in the super block, which was, I don't belong to. Now, this is where probably a uh, thing comes that whether I really made it or I faked it. I don't know. But the fact remains, the results showed that, well, I did belong to the super block. Uh, I did, you know, that the transformation that was needed. So that was the first transformation I would talk about, the personal transformation, which is next to impossible. And I was given a citation that this person is capable of breaking all records because what he has here, this was written by the brigadier. They give a pen picture. So that I would call as the first 
personal transformation, which is born out of willpower and not out of muscles. Wow. So I, that is the first time I believed everything is possible on this earth. Everything is possible on this earth. If you believe so, and if you think that you will not settle for the second. Now, this is very important. I will not settle for the second. Wonderful. I have goosebumps right now listening to the story, Sanjay. And it's, it's such a privilege to listen to this transformation. I think just by listening, uh, that desire which generally we start searching, it just comes in. And very nicely put, Sanjay, and that's something my first uh, season was also talking about. What is the passion? What is driving me? Uh, and very uh, well articulated. Of course, I love, I was visualizing the horse and you, Sanjay, running together, you know, trying to, you know, run and see who is uh, scoring first. But I guess all of us have it within us. And that's very critical, your foot across. And that's precisely Absolutely. Absolutely. why I thought, let's talk about transform uh, transformation, because most of the time people feel transformation is something very big, not me, I am not made for it. So what would uh, tell those listeners who are still struggling with am I transforming am I not transforming what is transformation what would you tell them so it's nobody's born with it nobody's born with it it's not about what do you want to do it is about who do you want to be that, that I think that who word is very very important who do I want to be that's the point what is, do, do you sleep at night? If you're sleeping at night peacefully, you will not make it, Momita, unfortunately. If you don't get sleep at night, that's the first sign that you're going to make it. Yeah. I remember as a child, you know, I was from a very middle class man, very, very humble and middle class. In fact, it's lower middle class because my father was a teacher. And whenever I used to look at I grew in a small town called Purulia. So whenever we used to look around, the only people whom we saw was the district magistrate, the superintendent of police, uh, the principal of our school. These were the people, you know, uh, who were supposed to be looked up. And I felt, when I used to go to their drawing rooms, I used to find, oh my God, they've got artifacts which I've never seen and I would always like to have it in my drawing room. They had lawns and offered chairs to sit, which we never had. And... Uh, the dresses they wore were something very different from what we wore. And I'll be very honest, Momita, that is the time, that is the day when I felt I will one day be like them. So much so in the afternoon, as a young boy in class seven, I used to take a cycle and half paddle. If you remember those days, we used to do half paddle. That means we cannot climb on the sit, uh, seat and, and, and drive the bicycle. So we used to to half paddle and, and, and nobody at home would allow me to go to the town from the school. So therefore afternoon, everybody would sleep summer afternoons. And I used to take that bike and go to the residence of SPDM and go to their gates and said, can I talk to DM uncle? Can I talk to SP uncle? And the guards would shoo me away, shoo me away. So one day it happened that the, the SP uncle was coming out and I was again going to the same guard. And so his SP uncle asked, who is that boy? And the guard said, Are saab, road satata every, uh, you know, he'll come and ask. He says, no, no, come, come. What do you want? And I still remember I was in class seven and I asked him, I want to be like you, SP uncle. How do I become like you? What do I need to do? And he burst out laughing. So I think this is very important. Uh, who do you want to be? Not what do you want? I think we get often stuck with what. And, and underplay who. Wonderful. Uh, very nice in terms of the Junoon word which you used, you know, I think that's what's coming up in this when you and who is what we are trying to look at. So Sanjay, you have been driven by yourself and that's what I hear your stories and very nicely you are sharing it with all my listeners today. But not everyone may not be even aware of that calling or may not be even, you know, in sync or in lay, you know line with okay what do i want to be or who do i want to be rather how do you think you can uh guide them to start the transformation journey of their good question it's a very deep question 
very, very deep question. So the first word, and I'm trying to be as brief and talk in as a common man's language, because a lot goes on here and a lot goes on here. It's very difficult to translate that. Today, in fact, when I say I'm in the spirit journey, mind, body, mind, and spirit, I'm actually now trying to analyze more. And, uh, you know, in my coaching sessions, in my uh, facilitation sessions, I'm trying to transfer this, but it is difficult. But if I try to summarize, and it's a very good question, and if I try to respond to this question, the first word that comes to my mind is a word called dhriti. Why am I using a Sanskrit word? And allow me to use a few, just a few Sanskrit words, one or two. Dhriti is a Sanskrit word. It doesn't have an English meaning in parallel. Dhriti is holding on, capacity to hold on to one's goals and dreams. Now, this is very important, the holding on. Everybody has dreams, Momita. You have dream, I have dream. All the people, all the listeners have dreams. All the audiences have dreams. But the holding on to that dream, to that goal, to that desire, the strength needed, the force needed, the capability needed to brave all the odds that will come in is called dhriti. This dhriti is very We will fall. Obstacles, spanners will be thrown our way. We will get convinced that ah probably this is not the way to go and I have an easier way. Always there will be easier ways, there will be shortcuts, there will be slightly less minus one. As I told you, the top enclosure. So there'll be the third enclosure, fourth enclosure. Oh, I, I improved, right? The Japanese way of doing it. I improved, I improved. No, nothing but the best. Now this improvement is the enemy of the best. I, I, I know the management uh, thinkers would kill me for this, but you know, there's no continuous improvement in my life. I need to have it. And I, I work and I, I better not exist if I don't have it. So that's the amount of risk that one has to take. So dhriti, the capacity to hold on to one's dream or goal or desire. So desire is a very important word. So from there, so holding that the power of intention and we underestimate the power of intention. Do you hold an intention? Trust me, Try this, holding an intention, and you will see the magic. So the power of intention. So this is the first thing, right? Now, as I said, desire is very important. The second thing I would say is, do you have a strong desire? Not desire, strong desire. That means nothing but the best. And how strong is your desire? And, and do you really, really want it? Because if you're sleeping well at night, then you don't have the desire. I, as I told you in, uh, again, a childhood story, one day my parents got up by hearing some sound and I was in class three or four, you know, and they got up from sleep and uh, they saw that I was getting ready for school and trying to open the door. That is the sound they got. And it was, they said, where are you going? I said, to school. And they said, it's not yet morning. I said, I know, but I can't wait. I have to go to school. Because, and they said, you know the time, it was 3 a.m. in the morning. And I was well dressed up. Well, you know, absolutely. Incidentally, I, my school dress was the same thing, the color of shirt that I'm wearing with black shorts. So I was wearing that, neatly wearing my shoes. And at 3 a.m., I couldn't wait for the sun to rise. Because I have to go to school, I have to study, and I have to come first. So much so in one exam, I, as a class three student, I boxed the nose of the teacher who came to take my paper, class three student, because there was one line or two lines in math. You know, if I don't do it, I get 98 out of 100. If I do it, I get 100 out of 100. If I get 98 out of 100, there is another boy. I still remember his name, Devanshu. If he will get 100 out of 100. Now, if I miss these two lines, I get 98, I become second, he becomes first. So what did I do? Auntie, we used to call auntie, those teachers, you know, who came. And Shiksha Niketan, she came to, she said, no, Sanjay, Sanjay, no, Sanjay, you have to give your paper. No, no, no. Then I said, the only way is if I can hit a solid blow on her nose. And I still remember, I hit on her nose. And she said, ore baba in Bengali, you know, ore baba, this is a doshu chile. Means a very, uh, you know, monstrous boy. And that was good enough. And I finished the whole thing and said, Auntie, here's the paper. And I'm first again. So 
So unless we have this kind of a desire, it's not okay to come second. It's all in contrary to a lot of stuff that we're talking today. Yeah. But it's not okay. I, 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 for one, resonated with one video which Shah Rukh Khan released a long time back that you've got to be restless. There is no calmness here unless I achieve my goals and ambition. And there will be three spanners all the time, mind spanner all the time, because I'm talking about now the mind plane. This entire stuff is in the mind plane. The desire, seat of desire is in the mind. Yeah. And the spanners that get thrown in, number one is judge. Mm. There will be a judge in our mind which will judge ourselves and say, ah, it's okay, no, you're third, it's okay. Third is a good position. Second is a very good position. So that judge is always telling us, judging others, judging the situation, judging me. Judge is our biggest enemy. Don't allow this judge to come in between you and your dreams, between you and your vision. Dream is more powerful than vision, actually. Uh, to me, to me, that has been the case. The second one, the second spanner that gets thrown, Momita, is victim. The victim feeling. I'm a victim of poor family. I'm a victim of uh, lesser education. I'm a victim of not being able to speak English well. I'm a victim of so many things, you know, like I'm not grown up in a city boy or, or I've not been educated in, in US, whatever, whatever. So this victim feeling. Everything is happening to me. Everything is happening to me. And the third one is dangerous one, right? Uh, the th third spanner is, you could call it a beckoner, which is like, will take us out for the small little trips here and there. It's okay to indulge today. So if you're dieting, it's okay to indulge today with some good food because it's only once in a time. It's okay to have two extra drinks. It's, it's not every day, you know. The beckoner always is an excuse. And with a song, it takes you away. You know, it's always like when you're trying to be true to the marriage and if marriage are, is a goal and these are fleeting extramarital affairs, which you'll say, oh, it's only for a night, you know. And beckoner has got that power. How strong is your mind? Because all your five senses, the panchendriyas, they're reporting to the boss and the boss is mine. Mind you, they, they collect the information, but they all send the report to mind for permission. So if this, the seat of all these five senses or even desires, your emotions from where the desires come, your thoughts, the seat for all these things is mind. How strong is your mind? So how, how well are you nourishing your mind? I'm not getting into the solution part of it, but how, what are you doing about your mind? So we spoke about the physical transformation, but now this question of yours led me to talk about the mind transformation the, at the psychological plane right uh, thank you so much uh, I think it, this conversation can go on and on Sanjay it's so deep and uh, very uh, I'm very happy that we could get to speak on this because uh, the way I see transformation even baby steps for me is the way to start you know and where I see or listen to your stories, I'm already visualizing success there. I love that 3 a.m. get up where this little boy wants to go to school. And I still see that, uh, you know, that purpose, that junoon, that fire still in Sanjay today from class three to today. So if we have to like, you know, maybe sum up this entire conversation, one thing that you may want to leave all of us with is your experience as to how do we make this transitions and where how do you cope up with it because things are not going to be easy when we are restless when we are having sleepless nights when the desire is burning within us how do we cope up to this uh while you did speak about distractions and judgments but one thing that keeps us going so th this is a very very deep question because uh, to contain the fire as you very rightly put and thank you for put, articulating it that way to contain that fire which is burning inside you, you need a, a very foolproof container. Otherwise, mm -hmm. this container will not be able to sustain that fire. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult. And that is where, Momita, that spirit transformation comes in. Mm -hmm. 
if we have not done the spirit transformation, this fire will not be sustainable and one will burn in, in his own fire. And the negativity of this entire fire will start playing out. You know, this is very strange because ego is a very, ego is important. Without ego, we can't move. It's not a negative word, but at some point of time, it becomes, it can become negative if it is not supported sufficiently by the spirit development of the spirit. Because it is a development of the spirit, the personal transformation of the spirit. I won't say personal transformation of spirit, uncovering the spirit. Personal transformation means like I'm trying to probably invent or discover. It is it is discovery. It is not invention. It is It was always there. You are uncovering it. But you are getting in touch with your spirit. You are getting in touch with your own self. And that, I would say, is the consciousness. Unless we are working on the consciousness, which illuminates the mind, which illuminates the body, which illuminates the desire that I'm talking about, which illuminates the fire that I'm talking about, which illuminates the, illuminates the sankalpa, which illuminates the intention that I'm talking about, the, which lends its degree of power where you can do anything you want, anything. I still remember in I Am Bangalore, I was sitting with the prof and we both were discussing in a session and and uh, you know i was she said she asked me so what do you want to do from here i said i don't know but my mind is saying i should eat thiknathan and i should understand mindfulness deeper there is a calling there and i also want to see what the west is thinking about all that stuff that east is doing and the best thing will be google what they're doing by the way google does a lot of stuff in the, on the mind plane so uh, so uh, but I said that I know it's impossible because neither I have that kind of money uh, nor I don't know how to go about it. So, and she said, of course, you'll be able to do it because you've been doing it all this. So many other things start now. I said, no, come on. It's not possible. It was exactly two years down the line that I could do all those, both the things. So what illuminates, illumines this, this desire or whatever you speak or whatever you want is the consciousness that will lend the conviction on your desire, which will give wings to your desire. So once you have understood the power of your consciousness, once you have understood who am I actually, and what is my purpose, where do I have to go and what is this transition all about? You mastered it. So to sum it up in four lines, first stage of life, we will feel we are a victim. Everything is happening to me. The other guy got into IM. I didn't get into IM. The other guy got into XLRI. I didn't get into XLRI. The other guy got into Cornell or Harvard and I didn't get... I, I'm a victim. And I'll justify my why I didn't get it. The victim. From to me, we will shift. We'll start having slowly a sense of responsibility. Why not I do... So, so what next? What do I do now? So buy me. So I'll start doing things. This stage is very important. From to me to buy me. Now I'm doing it. I'm a doer with a responsibility. And after this, the ego will come and, and destroy us at some point of time because it's me who's doing it, right? I can do whatever I want. And this ego, then we need to change into everything is happening through me. Look at the humility and the humbleness that's coming in now. I am not doing it. I am not a doer. So from the doership, we shift the gear to through me. That means surrender shift. Very subtly. And nothing spiritual about it. So I am the container through which the whole thing is getting delivered. You take pride in being a container through which any thought of yours can be transformed into action, into results. And finally, which I am right now in the pursuit is as me. So I am the one. Wow. I am the desired self. I am the one. Now, this is very important to propel the current self into the desired self or the new self. And there could be quite a few new selves in our life, by the way. It's not one grand self, something. Quite a few new self. Every time we have a new self, we're trying to rediscover ourselves looking ourselves, wanting to look ourselves in a new avatar, want to achieve something. So this strong understanding of consciousness 
and the way we would illumine ourselves and to shift the gear from to me to by me to through me the surrender spirit of surrender to i am as me i am who i want to be i'm already am it's like the waves competing with water when the waves finish in the race and they touch the shore the water is already there wave is nothing but a part of water so whoever i am even the future self is so i would say uh, be an experiencer in this world there will be things coming things going good things happening not so good things happening there will be dips there will be ups and downs change the gear from a doer to an experiencer where the whole world what's happening is an experience and you as an experiencer you are in it but out of it you are a director of the movie and not an actor in the movie and mind you the director is more powerful than the actor it's something like there is a screen a white screen and, and you go to a picture hall and you see the cinema and there's fire in the cinema and and everything you know there's a small baby as they show in the in a typical bollywood movie who's about to get burnt and the hero goes and you know and you were saying come on come on come on you pick the child up and bring it up when when the movie gets over and go near the screen and you will see that the screen is not burnt the fire happened on the screen but the screen is as cool as white as fresh ready for the next show and that's where you become the audience or more powerful than the audience is the director so the experiencer and the experience you will be able to direct your own movie one episode after another after another after another mind you it's not one show or one hit at the box office it's a series of hits we all want are you ready is a big question how well are you working on your consciousness will determine how well you illumine the mind will determine how well your activities will be focused and and you as a winner so this is very important the seer and the seen the experiencer and the experience wonderful sanjay this is like actually a 4dx movie in front of me what you have just put across and it's it's i'm resonating it with like become the director it's so powerful sanjay and uh, who else but you could bring up uh, in the simple way of i would say explaining what transformation is and i'm sure today our listeners are wanting more but at this point perhaps i'd like to stop and maybe start discovering myself as a person so thank you again sanjay and i'm sure a part 2 is there i will again come back to you and continue this conversation uh, conversation on transformation and thanks again as you we started this is your first podcast you are going to be in podcast more and more sanjay thank you <laughs> thank you mohita for dragging me into this uh, thank you so much it was a wonderful uh, uh, moment to recapitulate all the beautiful experiences of life and talk to you about them thank you thank you very much thank you <laughs>